Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Krause Health. Alongside Nate Mink, I'm Brent Dax. Coming up, Dino Babers is loving the crowd atmosphere at the Carrier Dome. We'll hear from the Orange as they preview their upcoming matchup with Connecticut. And Nate, that's just it. Syracuse is 3-0 with an opportunity to go 4-0. They got some votes in both polls this week, and Dino Babers says they're back on the map. My question to you is, when will we know that Syracuse football is truly back? I think, it, Brent, it depends on, on what your definition of back is. Is it just getting back to the postseason and then reaching a bowl game? Is it cranking up into the top 20, top 15 of the polls like Syracuse used to, used to reside in back in the, the late 80s and the early 90s and throughout the McNabb era? Or is it, is it higher? Is it competing for ACC championships much like they were competing for Big East championships back in the day? I think it's off to that, to see Donovan McNabb and Donovan Darius and some of these players back. I don't think it's competing for ACC championships regularly because I think that's a tough thing. I think it's something else you mentioned, though. If you are regularly in the conversation for the Associated Press Top 25, I vote in the polls, so I'm a little biased there, but I kind of see those teams that are consistently in that conversation. And I think when Syracuse gets back to that, I think they'll truly be back. Making a bowl game or two will certainly help that. So the Orange have a chance to go 4-0 here, and that is a result of how they have played and they have executed. But, Nate, how much of Syracuse's success so far has been due to the fact that, frankly, they've played some teams that aren't doing so well this year? You know, you have to play who, who's in front of you, and, and the schedule lined up, opener at Western Michigan, which I still think is going to be one of the better teams in the Mid-American Conference this year. The FCS opponent, Wagner, and Florida State, no doubt Florida State is, is down this year. First year under Willie Taggart, they're installing their new systems. It's going to take at least a couple years to fix that dreadful offensive line and get things up to speed. Now, Florida State will be back, whether it's under Willie Taggart or someone else, so they're still going to be a force in the ACC like they always will. Um, but Aside from that, again, I mean, Connecticut's coming in this week similar to, to Florida State. Randy Etzel is doing a total rebuild job there uh, up in stores. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the group of five in the AAC this year. It's going to take time for them to flip it around, but that's all out of Syracuse's control. They're probably going to start 4-0 for the first time since 1991. And it shouldn't be any less celebrated just because their schedule was a little softer than it was in previous years. Now on that note, one big reason Syracuse has finished four and eight for three straight years has been the defense has really fallen apart at the end of the year. It's early and again, the schedule hasn't really bared this out. We'll see this more when they play teams like Clemson coming up, but what are some positive signs you see from the Syracuse defense that they can kind of hold more water this year? For, for certain, their health. I mean, they, they have been healthy across the board. They have avoided that devastating season any injury. The last couple of years, it was Antoine Cordy. You know, their defensive line, that is the area that is the glue to this whole thing. As long as they stay healthy and they can continue to rotate seven, eight plus guys in there and give, give those starters a, a breather every now and then, they're going to be dangerous because as long as they get pressure on the quarterback, like we saw last week against DeAndre Francois, it's just going to make the rest of the defense in that back seven flow much more smoother. Now, the secondary, you know, guys like Andre Sisco, Chris Frederick, Cordy, Evan Foster, Scoop Bradshaw, they're doing a great job in coverage, too, buying that defensive line a little bit extra time to get that pressure on the quarterback. If everything flows together and is fluid, you know, this is a, this is a unit, much like we saw for the first nine games last year when they were healthy, they are going to be middle of the pack nationally and maybe one of the better units in the ACC. Another encouraging sign, Kylan Whitner, linebacker of the week in the ACC. That was a unit that had a lot of scrutiny coming into the season and so far so good there. Well, let's hear what Dino Babers in the Orange have to say about this matchup with the Huskies at the Carrier Dome. It's time for Syracuse Soundbites. You know, it was it was it was good to see everybody excited. I want to I want to I just hope we can keep that energy, keep that enthusiasm. I heard the quad was jumping. I was with the team trying to get ready for the game, but I heard that it was something that was quite a sight to see what was going on in the quad. And if we can keep that energy and keep that uh, uh, that atmosphere for home games, I think it'll be really outstanding. I think it'll be really cool. Well, the first thing that stands out is how big they are um, across the board. You know, they're very young, very, very young team. Um, I think they have four freshmen, one redshirt freshman on the D-line and um, three freshmen in the back end, um, two freshman linebackers. But at the end of the day, they're big. Um, they look like real D1 uh, football players. Um, so we're just going to try to get after them, um, try to tempo them and see how they handle that. Uh, we see an athletic front and an athletic quarterback and uh, some really skilled guys. And that's a different look than we had this past week with a quarterback who liked to stay in the pocket and an O-line who wasn't as athletic, but they were bigger. And uh, if they got a hold of you, they locked you down. So uh, 
definitely a different preparation uh, this week. We're trying to get ready for those guys. Connecticut comes into the Carrier Dome this week, Nate, and I just have to simply ask, what has happened to Connecticut Huskies football? What a rebuilding project Randy Edsel has there. I think the economics of that program has changed dramatically. When Edsel was there in his first stint, they were in the Big East, which at that time had an automatic qualifier tie into the BCS Bowl system. Obviously, when realignment took shape in, across college football, the Big East sort of dissolved. Connecticut got trapped in the American Athletic Conference, and the TV money that rolled in, it just wasn't the same at, or what it used to be relative to the Power Five, so to speak. Couple that with some bad hires after Randy left. I mean, obviously, Paul Pasqualoni was the immediate replacement when Randy left for Maryland. Uh, and then Bob Diago took, Bob Diaco took over when Paul left. Uh, they just haven't gotten going. I think Randy was so good at sort of uh, tending to the farm, so to speak, making sure their facilities were on par or at the top of their Big East peers. And when Randy left, Paul and Bob and the University of Connecticut sort of let those things go to waste, so to speak, and now Randy's back, and he understands that there's a lot to do there. You know, you talk to people at UConn, and they'll tell you it's a basketball school. That's always a problem, and Bob Diaco, like, almost gave up on recruiting, according to people that cover that team. So Randy Edsel, as Dino Baber said this week, building a whole new foundation at Connecticut. This Connecticut team comes in as a 27-and-a-half point underdog. They are 129th in the country in total defense and points allowed. That is dead last. It would appear that a Syracuse offense averaging 49 points per game is going to have a bit of a field day in this. You one. can't you can't find anything good to say about Connecticut. They you got did. a really good quarterback. They've yeah. got a really good quarterback. Okay, David Pendell, shout out to you. He could this, mm -hmm. he can play a little bit. Yeah, that's it though. That's all I got. Yeah, I think Syracuse is, is going to roll. Like you said, the number is 27, 27 and a half. I don't think Syracuse has any trouble covering that number. You know, again, I think it's it's about getting out of this game healthy for Syracuse, keeping it rolling. Obviously, next week, not to look too far ahead, but you have that big uh, national televised contest at Clemson down in Death Valley. Both teams are probably going to go into that game undefeated. There's an opportunity, again, for Syracuse to just get more comfortable defensively, work on that quarterback receiver timing, make sure the offense is clicking as, as efficiently as possible going into a big test. A big Clemson. test, and yeah. one where the Clemson Tigers are going to want revenge on the Orange for that big upset last year. We'll talk to you about that next week on Orange Weekly. That's all the time we have for this episode. For Nate Mink, I'm Brent Dax. Thanks for watching Orange Weekly, presented by Krause Health. We'll talk to you next time.